In this video lecture, we're going to discuss electrophilic addition reaction and this time we're going to relate uh, electrophilic addition with symmetric and unsymmetric alkenes. Now, the first thing that we need to uh, figure out what is meant by the term, by the term symmetric alkene. So, so if you have an alkene and you want, and if it's symmetric, what that means is that the that the arrangement of atoms around the carbon double bond carbon is going to be exactly the same on the right hand side and on the left hand side. For example, I have a molecule of butene. So butene has four carbon atoms and there's a double bond on the second carbon atom. Now if you look at this molecule, you're going to notice that around the double bond, so let's put this line over there, the left hand side and the right hand side of uh, this particular alkene is exactly the same. So I can come up with other molecules which are completely symmetric. I have ethene. Now if you look at ethene again, uh, then again arrangement of the atoms around the double bond is exactly the same the left hand side looks exactly like the right hand side so you have a number of molecules that can be classified as symmetric alkenes so let's just draw one more just to clarify the point so for example i have a double bond and i have ch2 ch3 on one side i have another ch2 and another ch3 on the other side and there, are, there there's a branch of CH3 on this carbon atom there's a branch of CH3 on this carbon atom now if you look at this molecule again then again uh, the arrangement of atoms on the left hand side and on the right hand side is exactly the same so so any alkene can be classified as symmetric if uh, the arrangement of atoms on the right and left side of the double bond or around the double bond is exactly going to be the same in a similar manner, let's uh, discuss unsymmetric alkenes. So unsymmetric alkenes are the ones, so we're now going to discuss unsymmetric alkenes. So the arrangement of uh, atoms around the carbon double bond carbon is going to be different. For example, I have a molecule, let's start with the simplest. Uh, let's say I have a molecule which is something like this. Now this is an unsymmetric alkene because the arrangement of atoms around the double bond on the left hand side and the right hand side of the double bond they're, they're different in this molecule. Similarly I can come up with butuanine. Uh, remember butuene was symmetric so let's see what butuanine looks like. So there's going to be a double bond on the first carbon atom, there's going to be one hydrogen over here, two hydrogens on this carbon atom, three on the last terminal carbon atom and there would be two hydrogens attached to this first carbon atom and again if you look at this molecule then this molecule uh, the arrangement of atoms on the left hand side and the right hand side are different so it's an unsymmetric alkene so let's come up with one more let's talk about propene so if I have propene and let's say I have two methyl propene so I have a methyl branch on the second one and let's complete all the bonds so there would be three hydrogens on this one and again as you can see the arrangement of atoms on the left hand side and on the right hand side is different so the right hand side looks different from the left hand side so that's what an unsymmetric alkene is now I'm going to first discuss electrophilic addition uh, for symmetric alkenes and this reaction does not uh, it doesn't give us any problems so let's uh, discuss uh, the addition reaction of uh, I'm picking water I'm, I'm talking about the hydration reaction of alkenes uh, so I'm going to take a symmetric alkene let's take the case of butene so there's going to be a double bond and then there's going to be another CH3 and they're going to be there's going to be a hydrogen over here and a hydrogen over here now the product of this reaction is going to be now when you reacted with H2O uh, you're going to have two options so the first thing is you're going to get rid of the double bond. So I'm going to draw, redraw CH3, CH, but instead of the double bond, I'm going to draw a single bond. And there's going to be CH3. Now, if you look at this molecule, the two carbon atoms that were previously forming a double bond, they are now forming three bonds. So they need to make a fourth bond. So it's either going to be 
in a hydrogen atom is going to be added to one of the carbon atom and OH atom, OH group would be attached to the other one. So I would have these groups being attached to, um, to the two carbon atoms. Now the two options, what could also happen is that the two groups can be attached the other way around as well. So for example, in the previous case, I attached H, H on the left hand side and I attached uh, OH on the right hand side. But what could happen is that these the positions could reverse as well. So what the other product that would be would also be a possibility is that the OH can get attached to the first carbon atom and the hydrogen could get attached to the second carbon atom. Now I have I have two products because I've switched the positions of the H and OH groups. Now if you look carefully and if you look carefully uh, to, uh, uh, and see both of these molecules, there are four carbon atoms and the, uh, the OH group is attached on the second carbon atom from the right. Over here, there are four carbon atoms and the OH group is attached to the second carbon atom from the left. Now, if you look at these two molecules, these two molecules are exactly the same. They're just flipped versions of each other. So starting from here, there's a CH3, then there's COH, uh, CH2, then there's CH3. Starting from this side, this is CH3, CHOH, CH2, and then you have CH3. So these two molecules are exactly, exactly the same. Um, so you get, you get a single product. You're not getting two different products. So you get a single product because the above two products that I drew are just flipped versions or reversed versions of each other. So I can pick one molecule and turn it the other way around. It's going to look exactly like the first molecule. So I'm going to get a single product when I'm talking, I'm dealing with symmetric alkenes. So that's the first thing. When you're dealing with symmetric alkenes, any electrophilic addition reaction is going to result in just one single product. We're going to discuss the electrophilic addition for unsymmetric alkenes and this will present us with one problem and that is that if we if I try to do the dehydration reaction uh, for an unsymmetric alkene let's say I have uh, I have propene now propene is an unsymmetric alkene because uh, the arrangement of the atoms around the double bond is different so you can confirm that by I'm pointing out the double bond over here. So the arrangement of atoms around the double bond is different. So the products in this case would be that the double bond would be replaced by a single bond and you're left with uh, the rest of the molecule is exactly the same. And they're going to be, the, the, because the two carbon atoms which were forming the double bond are now forming a single bond. So they're left with one, they need to make one more bond to complete the outer bonds. So one hydrogen would be bonded to one carbon atom and one OH group would be bonded to the other carbon atom. Or it could be the other way around as well. You can have another product in which the H and OH that are being added are switched. So the left hand side carbon atom would be bonded to OH and the right hand side carbon atom would be bonded to H. So that's H on the right hand side and that's OH on the left hand side. Now if you look carefully and if you look to, uh, at both of these molecules and these two molecules are totally different. Uh, the reason is uh, in the previous case, in the symmetric case, the two molecules were exactly the same. They just flipped versions of each other. But in this particular case, what happens is that you get two completely different products. So here uh, OH is attached. So it's first, second, third. So it's, it's on the on this carbon atom but over here if I have one two three carbon atoms and OH is attached on the center carbon atom so they're completely two different uh, structurally different molecules so when we talk about unsymmetric alkenes we are always going to get two products so I'm getting two products over here and the totally different products but the the probability of forming one product is going to be slightly higher compared to the probability of forming the other product and in this case this product is going to be called a major product and this product over here is going to be I'm putting a cross over there because there's a low, lower probability of forming this product so this product over here is going to be called a minor product and 
the way you can figure out which one of the two is going to be your major product is by I'm going to describe the Markovnikov's rule so we have the Markovnikov's rule which would help us determine which one of the products is going to be our major product and the rule simply states that the hydrogen atom would be bonded So the hydrogen atom would be bonded to the carbon atom and specifically the carbon atom which were previously making carbon double bond carbons. So only those, those two carbon atoms would be involved in the addition reaction. So the hydrogen atom would be bonded to the carbon atom which has more hydrogen atoms. more hydrogen atoms so what that means is so i'm going to highlight this uh, what that basically means is that i have these two carbon atoms that's one and that's the second one now if you look at these two carbon atoms and if you look at the right hand carbon atom you're going to see that this carbon atom is bonded to two hydrogen atoms whereas this carbon atom the left hand carbon atom is only bonded to just one hydrogen atom so the hydrogen atom would choose the carbon atom which is already bonded to more hydrogen atom which is going to be this one so this would be our major product because the hydrogen would choose that carbon atom which is already bonded to more hydrogen atom and the OH group would then obviously go to the other carbon atom.